What's up, guys? It's Rosie. Um, sorry, I can't be with you today. I have some other things I have to do. So I've made you a quick recording so that you can follow this for an asynchronous lesson. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to talk about the stylistics of newspapers, especially newspaper headlines. So let me show you my PowerPoint. Here we go. We're going to talk about what's the best way to write if you're writing for a newspaper, how to get the attention of your audience, uh, and a few other things. So we're going to start by looking at British newspapers in general. Uh, then we'll talk about internet news and then we'll do some vocabulary review. Right. So let's look at some British newspapers. I want you to imagine for a minute that you live in Britain, you've come to the supermarket in the morning and you're looking for a newspaper to read. Um, on the shelf, these are the sort of the Britain's most popular newspapers. Could you pause the video for a second and have a look? Maybe you can look at the PowerPoint. I'll send that to you in Teams as well and tell me which one you would like to read out of all of them. I can't hear you, obviously. Um, my guess is probably a lot of you may have gone for the eye. The reason why I say this is actually British teenagers uh, do read the eye. It's designed for people under the age of 16. And you can see what kind of audience they are looking for by looking at what kind of articles they've got. You know, they've got a picture of a meme cat. They're talking about American culture. And the eye is the only newspaper out of all of them you can see that has the head. The name of the newspaper is like just tucked up to the left and it's kind of hidden. Um, so this is the sort of typical teenage newspaper. Uh, perhaps some of you are more traditional and more serious. You might have chosen The Times. The Times is Britain's oldest newspaper and it's popular with old people like my grandfather will read The Times. Um, you can see what kind of audience this one is for, the Daily Star. Psycho Seagull mugs TV legend. Mugging, it's the crime where you, you go to someone on the street and you violently steal something from them. Um, so a seagull has gone to this TV star and stolen his sandwich and then run away. And the headline, Psycho Seagull mugs TV legend. Um, it's not an especially serious newspaper, as you can see from the headline. Which one's the most serious? Have another look. Mm, yeah, you can see from the amount of text that's on the front page of this newspaper that the Financial Times is probably the most serious one. Um, there's some pictures of um, Macron, the French um, Prime Minister, on the front of the paper. So it's a pretty serious newspaper. Uh, you can also see who it's for based on the color of it. Uh, it's the only newspaper that's yellow. Uh, yellow pages is what we call the economics newspapers. So if you're an economist, if you're a banker, this is the newspaper for you. Um, so let's do some revision of stylistics vocabulary uh, to see how much you can remember. Um, can anyone find alliteration? Pause the video if you can't. Okay, alliteration, psycho seagull, that's alliteration, million miss cancer checks, another American school shooting, the people in parliament, these are all alliteration. You can see in traditional newspapers, alliteration is pretty common, um, although you can see it's more common in the the younger people's newspapers and the kind of stupid newspapers. Uh, this is also not a very respected newspaper. Um, in general, alliteration makes your article seem less serious and more ha 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 funny. Right? Can anyone find an example of hyperbole? Well, how about the most dangerous chicken in Britain? Uh, this is Jeremy Corbyn. He was the, um, the shadow prime minister. So he wasn't the prime minister. He was like um, the uh, alternative prime minister who wanted to be minister but didn't win the election. 
Is he the most dangerous man in, in Britain? No, obviously, but ha ha ha. Uh, it's a funny joke about this Prime Minister, I guess. All right, can anyone find a statistic? Yeah, that's too easy. A statistic is one million. Uh, you see that one million is written using words and not numbers. The reason why one million is written using words uh, is because it's easier for people to read one million than it is for them to read one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. So this is easier to understand um, and it's kind of traditional in normal newspapers to use statistics in, in word format. Can anyone find personification? There's three bits of personification. The first one is, of course, Psycho Seagull. Can Seagull really be a psychopath? No, we're giving something that's not human, the characteristics of being human is personification. Calling Jeremy Corbyn a chicken, that's kind of the opposite of personification, um, but we're saying like a chicken, uh, when they are afraid, they always run away. Um, Jeremy Corbyn is like a chicken, a cow. It's kind of personification, you can say. The last one is Google, the terrorist's friend. Uh, Google is a machine, it's not a person, so really it can't be friends with terrorists, but we personify Google like it's a person, so then we can easily talk about it. Okay, uh, any examples of slang you can see? Right, actually there's not a lot of slang. There's only slang you can find in here in the Daily Star. There is the word telly. Telly is British slang for television. All right, yes, I hope one of you got that. Um, and also uh, it's down here, uh, TV legend. Uh, it's not like a legend man. So if you are a legend, then lots of people like you basically. So TV likeable man. Um, we've also got, ah, can anyone see passive voice in any of these? Have a look. The answer is no. If you read a stylistics textbook, you will see people say in newspapers, it's traditional to have passive voice most of the time in your newspaper headlines. Uh, but actually in modern newspapers, this is no longer the case. The reason why not is because when we search stuff on Google, we don't search in passive voice, right? We search for active voice. And these guys, they all want to be the top of the Google search results. Uh, so in order to do that, we have to write in active voice. So headlines these days, not passive voice anymore. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the rule of three over here. Okay, so what's the rule of three? It means that when you make a list of things, the best number of objects to have in your list is three. Uh, the example you can find here, it's Boris Johnson. He's now our prime minister. It is, he misled, he lied to the queen, the people and parliament. The queen, the people and parliament, it's three things in the list. If you have only two, he misled the queen and the people. It doesn't sound so good. If you have four, he misled the Queen, the people, the Parliament and the press. Four is too many. The perfect number of things to put in a list is always three. And that's just a stylistics rule for English language. Last one. If any of you can find a joke. Yeah, ha ha ha. He clucks up Brexit. That sounds like a bad word, but the word cluck is the sound of a chicken. Cluck, 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 cluck. Um, yeah, Psycho Seagull, I guess that's a joke. Uh, in general, the less serious newspapers like to have jokes on their front cover. All right. So when we look at the front page of newspapers, we can tell not just from the colors and the pictures, uh, but also from the stylistics of the text, what the target audience are for these newspapers. For example, what's the target audience of the Daily Star? It's someone who doesn't want very serious headlines. 
They want jokes. They want stupid stories. They want to smile and laugh. They want to read about Michelle. Uh, great. Uh, on the other hand, what's the target audience for The Times? Well, it's people who can read very well. Um, it is people who watch television, I suppose. Um, and it's kind of just appealing to old people in general, you can see. So this is the traditional news. In Britain, still, traditional news is pretty popular, um, but probably most of us don't get our news from newspapers these days. Most of us get our news from online. The headlines online are not quite the same as they are in traditional newspapers, because in online, we've always got clickbait headlines everywhere. Cabin crew take secret pictures. You won't believe the results. 20 celebrities who have beaten cancer. The must-see technology that is changing the way you listen, dot, dot, dot. What do you call dot, dot, dot again? Ellipsis, good memory, nice job, guys, yes? That's right. Why are newspapers writing such horrible headlines, really? Why do they do clickbait? Well, it's because they want more people to click on their article. If you click on their link, they get money for you looking at their adverts. Does it matter to them if you actually read the article itself? Actually, no. It only matters for them if you click the article. And so uh, a lot of newspapers are writing kind of stupid clickbait headlines just to get some extra money. So let's look at the stylistics of clickbait. Uh, here I have a kind of funny comic. You can read it by yourself if you like. Uh, here are some examples of historical events written about using clickbait. I'd like you to actually read this for me and try and think of some common phrases that you see in clickbait. Uh, you can pause the video and uh, have a look. All right, so some common clickbait phrases, of course, we say um, shocking new thing or one weird trick or this will make you cry, it will lose you faith, make you lose faith in humanity. This is the most amazing thing that you will see all day. These are all sort of common clickbait headlines. How do these guys work on your brain? Well, the psychology of clickbait is that they try to make you feel some kind of strong emotion. If you feel any kind of strong emotion, uh, probably you will be tempted to click the link. For example, some of these headlines here, they make you feel curious. You want to know the information. For example, this one weird mold kills all germs. Oh, it's only a little mold and it can kill germs. Oh, that sounds really great. I'd love to try it. I wonder what the mold is called. Well, the only way to know the information is to click the link. Penicillin, by the way, no need to click the link. Um, some headlines are actually designed to make you annoyed or angry. Because if you feel angry, you will click on the link and then you will write in the comment section like, oh, you are so bad, you always clickbait me, I hate you, I hate your article. The company don't care if you write angry things at them, right? Because they still make money from you looking at their adverts. So something like six Titanic survivors who should have died. You will read that and you will think, how dare you say that, that someone should have died? What a horrible person you are. And then you will click it, you will write to them, they will make money. OK, um, some clickbait headlines, they try their best to make you feel afraid of stuff. Um, for example, this one, avoid polio with this one weird trick. Polio is a terrible disease that um, it used to kill children and make them disabled uh, for the rest of their lives. You will see polio and you will say, oh, I don't want to get polio, so I have to click this article so I can find out how not to get it. Um, some of them are designed to make you feel defiant. What's the meaning of defiant? It means like you say to someone, no, it doesn't, no, it's not, no, it's not true. 
Um, for example, where's the one? These nine atrocities will make you lose faith in humanity, or these five pictures will make you cry. You will say, ha, ha, I won't cry. You can't make me cry. And then you click it and they make money. That's clickbait for you. And the last one that they do, it's very clever, is they make the headline relatable. So you feel like the article might be about you. For example, 17 things that will be outlawed now that women can vote. This is a joke, obviously. But maybe you will read this and you will think some things will be illegal now because women can vote. Oh no, maybe something, one of my things is illegal. And then you feel worried about it. You have to click on it to find out if this article is about you or not. Um, so these are the sort of uh, clickbait tricks. Any strong emotion that they give you, that's going to get your attention. And yeah, that's how they make their money. So we have some idea about how clickbait works. Let us try and understand clickbait a bit more. Um, so this next exercise, it's from an experiment performed in the Netherlands. Um, basically, they got a normal news, a Dutch newspaper web page. Um, and they created two versions. Version A had all clickbait headlines. Version B had all regular headlines. So anyone who visited this newspaper's website would get clickbait or, or not clickbait. And then they measured which page got more people to click through to an article to look at it. Which one do you think got more clicks? It's yeah, obviously that we all know that clickbait works. It works on us, of course. Um, so here you can actually see the headlines that they used in this experiment. Um, I'd like you to have a look at these headlines by yourself, actually. And I want you to read them and tell me which one do you think got more clicks? Was it version A or version B and why? OK, so pause the video, take five minutes or something like that for yourself. Um, choose A or B, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. I hope you really did pause it. Right, we're back. Um, what was the first one? Uh, of course, it was B. Version A, it doesn't ask any questions. It doesn't make you feel curious. It just makes you say, mm, I agree. Without any strong emotion about this, you wouldn't really click it. Whereas this one, it starts with a question word, why? It asks you why, and now you want to know the answer. So using questions, that's a clickbait tactic. Next one, number two. A is the clickbait headline. Why? Because it is very ambiguous. Ambiguous means you're not 100% sure of the meaning. So in this version, Alkmaar, the city, was transformed with a semi-pedestrian zone, so cars can't go here at certain times of day. You know what's the idea. But in this one, what is the student idea? And what small Dutch town was transformed? Is it my hometown was transformed? And did it transform in a good way or a bad way? We don't we don't actually know from this headline and maybe you feel a bit afraid because of that. So the ambiguity makes you click through. Uh, next one. It is B. Uh, the reason why it's B is because it's using ellipsis. We talked about ellipsis in the first lesson. Ellipsis gives this mystery of like what will come next. We don't know. So uh, that's how that one works on you. Um, the next one. It is A. Why is it A? Well, two reasons. Number one, how predictable is the weather? It doesn't really give me any strong emotion. This is a scientific question and the answer is scientific. But this one, why is the weather forecast so often wrong? This gives me this uh, emotional reaction. Oh yes, I went to the park and then it rained on me. I'm so cross uh, like this. Uh, another reason why A is the better clickbait is because it's so relatable. You know, it's not about, I don't sit down at lunchtime and wonder like, I wonder how predictable the weather is. 
the question that I really ask myself is, oh my God, why is the weather forecast wrong again? Uh, so it's relatable and yeah, it's a stronger emotion. Next one. You may think B, B sounds like an advert, but actually A is the clickbait version. Uh, easy money fast. It just sounds like a trick. It sounds like someone is trying to fool you. And so most people wouldn't click on easy money fast. But this one, this doesn't sound like a trick, right? It doesn't sound dishonest. Seven ways to make money while waiting for a job. Oh, I'm waiting for a job. That's relatable to me. And seven different ways to make money. This means if I don't like the first option, maybe I like the second one. Maybe I like the third one, the fourth one. Um, so giving a list of different objects, it's called a listicle. I'll write it for you. List article equal. Nah, like this. Uh, listicles appeal to people because people like to see a lot of different choices. Next one, A or B. It is A. Why? Because you feel afraid. Am I going to make this same mistake? Am I going to lose $3,000? Oh no, I have to click it and find out if I'm making this little mistake. Whereas this one, you know why he lost the money and so you don't feel worried about it. Maybe you feel a bit angry, but it's not very relatable. Next one, A or B? It is A. Asking a question, a rhetorical question, makes people wonder and also it's asking about you. Are you making some mistakes? You feel like, oh no, maybe people are talking about me and my mistakes and uh, I just don't know about it. I have to click and find out if it's really about me. Whereas this one, oh yeah, it's just office workers complaining. But this one, oh no, maybe it's my mistakes. Uh, next one, A or B? It is B. This uh, headline is trying to make you feel that emotion defiance. Like I said, you read this and you think, yes, I will make it as a successful photographer. How dare you say this? And you feel angry and so you click it. That's your emotion uh, tricking you into making money for these newspapers. Uh, last one. I think this one is B. This one, if you read this article, you know it's going to make you feel unhappy or upset and maybe you aren't very happy about reading it but this one you'd be excited to just look at other people's children and say ha 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 how horrible they are so you want to relate to this article uh, in a good way uh, so you'll probably choose this one and of course the revealed in capital letters with the exclamation marks that's pretty quick baity too um so Let's do some quick revision about the stylistics of clickbait. Which one gives more details about the content of the article and which one's more ambiguous? Yeah, clickbait's more ambiguous and traditional headlines tend to give more information so you know what the article is going to be about. Which one uses a listicle to entice you? It's clickbait, just so. Uh, which one uses more question words? Clickbait, like why is uh, this always happening? Uh, question words make you click. Which one tries to make the reader feel negative emotions? That's clickbait. Which one cuts out conjunctions and verbs to make it shorter? Well, let's look back. It's not clickbait, is it? Yeah, traditional headlines cut out conjunctions and verbs, whereas clickbait uh, doesn't do that. It doesn't need to because it doesn't need to save any space. Next one, which one uses numbers in text form? That's traditional headlines. Uh, clickbait uses numbers in number form because they're more eye catchy. Which one presents the reader with a mystery that can only be solved by reading the article? Clickbait, of course. And the last one, which one uses superlative adjectives? The best, the most amazing, the most incredible. It's clickbait as well. That's right. OK, so uh, your assignment at the end of this video, guys, uh, you have a couple of them. Number one, do the Teams quiz. Uh, but number two, I'd like you to write your own clickbait. Uh, you can see here 
a list of traditional kind of headlines. What I want you to do is choose one of these headlines and then change it to make it into a clickbait headline. For example, here I have Facebook to take steps to reduce clickbait. That's a normal traditional headline. Let's make it into clickbait. What about your Facebook feed will change completely next week? Find out how or what is Mark Zuckerberg doing with Facebook this week? Question mark. Let's do this one as well together. The equivalent of four donuts. Experts warn of high sugar content in children's drinks. What about, let's make the reader afraid. Let's say, you won't believe what's in these children's drinks. Sugar, surprise, yeah, okay. But it's clickbait, great. Uh, so can you pick one of these on this list uh, and write me a clickbait headline? Thank you. Oakley, Doakley. So, uh, just to review some vocabulary, we have a few extra words that we didn't know last week. The first one is target audience. The target audience is the people you are writing for. For example, you need to define your target audience to be successful in social media. Who is your social media for? You have to choose uh, first. The rule of three, uh, when you make a list, the best number of objects to have in a list, it's three. Ambiguity, when you write a headline that people are not sure what's the meaning of it, that's ambiguous, ambiguity is the noun. Ellipsis, dot, 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 dot. Uh, a listicle, top five list or seven ways to make money, that's a listicle. And superlative adjective, the best. All right, so three pieces of homework. Homework number one, choose one of these and write a click by eight headline. Homework number two, do the team's quiz for newspapers as usual. Um, there's also a quizlet that I will send you that's optional. Uh, there's also one more optional piece of homework and it is here. Um, this I will send you in Teams, it's extra credit work. Um, basically, I've got down here three different newspaper articles all on the same subject. This is from the Guardian newspaper, this is from the Sun newspaper, and this is from the BBC website. Your job is to fill in this table over here with information about the Sun and the Guardian to compare what the style is like. For example, if we look at the BBC News headline, it is COVID vaccine, over 70s urged to get vaccine as UK nears target. This is a very boring headline, but it gives all of the information that's going to be in the article uh, just straight away in the headline. If we make a comparison with the Sun, the Sun's headline is Good job. OK, so what is this headline doing? It's just a joke. It's a pun. We can write in here. Joke, pun, makes you laugh. Uh, jab, by the way, uh, means uh, injection. So yes. The style of the headlines is very different and you can look for the Guardian yourself. You can write in your own information. Um, you can do this if you want. It's optional work um, and that's all from me. So I wish you a lovely weekend. Uh, sorry I couldn't see you today. Um, I'll talk to you all next lesson. Okay, bye. See you.